champions. Lord, we're champions. standing as we go into our first phase of prayers this evening. I want us to, at this time, open our Bibles to the book of Psalm 69 verse 30. Thank you. Say, so, I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. 
This evening, we are going to thank God. We are going to be thanking him. We are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you for visiting us in our last Monday service. And thank you for your grace and mercies upon our lives. Thank you for visiting us and thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Begin to thank him. Thank you for all he has done. Thank you for the things he did for us on Monday. For his grace, for his grace is visited upon us. Open your mouth and talk to God this evening. Open your mouth. I expect to hear people praying. I expect to hear people praying. I expect to hear people praying. Open your mouth and talk to God. Say, Father, thank you. Thank you. If you are grateful, you will open your mouth and you will thank. If you are grateful, you will open your mouth and be thankful. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your visit last Monday during our prayer service. Prayer service. We thank you for, your, for bringing us into the end, oh God. Father, we thank you for bringing us to the end of this three days fasting, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the success. We thank you, oh God, for strength that you've given to us. We thank you for strength upon each one or each and every one of us. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Matthew 18, 19. He said, again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Now there is a, there, there is a place for agreement this evening. I want you to hold the hands of your neighbor. Hold the hands of your neighbor. It's a prayer of agreement. He said, two, if two shall agree as touching anything. As touching anything, anything, two on earth, I agree, as touching anything. He said, my father in heaven will do it. I want you to open your mouth this evening and say, father in the name of Jesus, we paralyze all satanic attacks against PGPM, against the entity known as PGPM, against members of their families, against their businesses, Against their careers, against members of this ministry, against the ministers and all the workers of this fellowship. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Paralyze. Paralyze. Say, if two shall agree, as touching anything, pray a prayer of agreement this evening. A prayer of agreement. He said, God will do it. He will do it. He listens to our prayers. He listens to our prayers and he brings them to completion. Father, we thank you. Man, tere bo shalha de akaradosh, replant de adada kosani. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the success of our prayer Monday. We thank you for bringing us to the end of this three-day fast. Father, we know it is you who are strengthening us, oh God. Father, in agreement, oh God, we come to you today and we say we paralyze every satanic works, every satanic works against members of this fellowship, against everyone's business in this fellowship, against their career, against their family. Lord, we paralyze, oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because we know you are going to do great things today, oh God. We exalt your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My year of more of him. Amen and amen. We shall be taking the next prayer. And the, anchor, the scripture we are using can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. New Living Translation, please. I read, I will take revenge. I will pay them back. In due time, their feet will slip. Their day of disaster will arrive. And their destiny will overtake them. Praise the Lord. So we're going to pray like this. We'll say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let all the wasters of human lives and resources in Nigeria be judged, exposed, disgraced, and wasted 
Let all the wasters of human lives begin to pray in the name of our Lord Jesus and resources. Those who waste our life, human lives and resources in Nigeria, ah, Father, judge them, expose them, disgrace them, and waste them. Those who waste human lives in this country, resources of this country, Almighty Father, judge them, expose them, disgrace them, Waste them in the name of Jesus. Marika Bakunda Lari Aprazute, Liki Pakota Lari Rabrazute, Hata, Kalipa Sote Leri Pasota Lari Amason de Leria, Rigi Buka Sochete Leriaba. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's now time for personal supplication. And the scripture we are using is to be found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. 1 John 5, 14. And it's the International Standard Version, please. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask for anything according to his will, he listens to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you are now going to present your prayer card and request to him. If you want to pray aloud, pray aloud. If you want to in any form, shape that you want to pray, just do that within two minutes. Thank you, Most High God. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. My year of more of him. Amen and amen. Please, let's pay attention as I read the announcements for today's service. Number one, our prophetic focus for the month of March is more of him for divine wisdom. Anchor scripture, Isaiah 3, 33 and verse 6. And it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Number two, praise the Lord. Today we shall activate and cut the covenant of life. This will be the last covenant for this year. Every one of the covenants we have cut will answer for you and me in Jesus' name. This is because our God is a covenant keeper. Number three, praise the Lord. Please bear in mind that our first quarterly vigil for the year 2020 will hold this month. Date, 20th of March. Details will be announced in due course. Number four, our next Care Center Fellowship comes up this Saturday, the 7th of March, 2020. The Care Center holds at five locations around Lagos. If you don't have one you are attending at the moment and you wish to attend, kindly ask from any one of our ushers for the addresses so you can locate the one that is closest to you. All members are admonished to take advantage of this pat platform to dig deep into the scripture and enhance their understanding of wisdom. Do invite others as you come along. Number five. The ministry office is open for counseling, prayers, and deliverance on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Time is 11 a.m. up until 4 p.m. Office address remains 164B Ikeja Way Dolphin Estate, Ikoyi, Lagos. Number six, praise the Lord. The food bank mission for this month of March 2020 will hold next Monday. Contributions and donations are very much welcome in cash and in kind. You can do transfers to the account number that is shown on the screen right now. You can also do checks and let all checks be addressed to Prevailing Glory Prayer Ministry. Kindly write it in full if you care. And at the back of the check, kindly write food bank. If you care to use the POS, it is at the back. And if it's cash you want to use, kindly go ahead and do so and label the envelope food bank. Number seven, praise the Lord. Our next hour of refreshing meeting comes up next Monday, the 9th of March, 2020. Time is 11, 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. prompt. Join other brethren here to get refreshed and to receive more of him through prayers and the word. 
Remember to invite someone as you come along. Number eight, please, if you are or know any representative of Deborah's Grace Limited, any representative of Deborah's Grace Limited, kindly see me after service. The Lord bless us all. And if there be any other announcements, it will be communicated to us in the course of the service. Praise the Lord. Twenty twenty, my year of more of him. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time to share our testimony. I have just two names here, Brother Banji and Sister Theo Ladner. Brother Banji. Praise the Lord. My name is Ola Tunji Ola Banji. I want to give this testimony to the glory of the Lord Most High, the one who can do what no man can do. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'll start by saying, few days before our mother and the Lord's birthday, some whistle blowers made us to know. So, and they decided that we should at least once in a year celebrate her and give her a bit of surprise. At least somebody that has been watering you for a whole lot of years. If you water her for once, it's not bad. So I keyed into it. But lo and behold, I didn't have the money that we agreed on. So I just like, I took a step and I borrowed the money. Very simple money like that. And I did my own part. And everybody can testify that Monday was one. We don't want to go home. But immediately after that, that door that should have opened for me since last year, that error or call, and seems short, the opportunity that I thought it has lost, God reactivated it again. God reactivated it again. And what God did was that on Wednesday, I received a message, like three messages. And the message was talking about uh, uh, the roadworthiness of a car, driver license, and third party insurance or whatever, whatever. I'm just like, I didn't buy, spoke of bicycle, car, not to talk of uh, car, but I kept on looking at where is this thing coming from? But I sure, I saw my name. So I kept quiet. I could not tell my wife because I don't want to raise unnecessary alarm at all. But lo and behold, on Sunday in the morning, my pastor called me in church that, I should come on Monday morning to come and see him. I said, me, I did not have chance, so I have program on Monday. He said, when I'm done with whatever I'm doing on Monday, I should come. So by the time I was done here on Monday, I went back to Anthony. Long, short, long story short, I met my pastor. He just said, follow me. When he said, follow me, then I followed him. We got to a car. He opened it, kickstarted it, and said, did you like it? I said, yes. He said, okay. He went into the car and brought out the particulars of the car, gave it to me. I said, that is your car. I said, ah. I was, I was looking. I said, sir, do you really mean my car? He said, yes. Ah, ah. He said, open it, your name and everything. Plate number, roadworthiness, everything settled. It's just a car of pick and drive to the glory of God. And I'm just like, ah, ah, where is this one coming from? Who is the one that gave me the car? He said, go and be enjoying your God. The person is an anonymous, said they should not mention his name. So I didn't know the person that blessed me with the car. To the glory of God, I brought my family here this night with the car. It's outside, to the glory of God. Wow, what an awesome testimony. Ah, ah. For year 2020, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, awesome. Praise the Lord. I also stand here to testify of the Lord's goodness. Um, the word of God says that in all things we should give thanks. About a month and a half ago, I'll say, I lost a very dear brother-in-law, my older sister's husband. He died suddenly. It was so sudden, it took us all by surprise. But I 
know that God knew ahead that it was going to happen because he's God Almighty. Now, we now started planning immediately for the funeral because the children are not here. Only my sister is here. The children are all abroad. We started planning for the funeral. We thought we would hold it in Lagos, but the family said, no, we have to go to Edo State for the burial. So plans started to change. We bought our tickets to go by air, paid for our tickets. Only for that time, they just a few days before, if you remember, flights were not going anywhere because of bad visibility. Flights were canceled. You know the um, uh, hazards of going by road. It then meant that we had to now go by road because the body was going by road. So we had to now go by road. It's not some, we had already made all the plans. There's not, it, you can't postpone a burial like that. So everyone was apprehensive. We were afraid, to say the least. In fact, the children were so afraid. Coming from abroad, they were so afraid. In fact, some said they are not going. Anyway, of course, prayers started going forth. There are prayers going on. And I can assure you that the prayer cover was real. God took charge. We went by road from, in fact, before we could even uh, plan, I, I had never heard of GIG. I never heard of them. We had to book buses to go by road. You can imagine my sister and her five children, then other members of the family, all of us by road from Lagos. I just want to thank God because God took charge. We went by road from Lagos, made a stop in Benin, and headed to, I'm um, from Ishan in Edo State, and it's about an hour and a half from Benin. Truly, God was in charge. We got there safely. In fact, on the way, I didn't realize that the day before, uh, a Catholic priest had been kidnapped the day before on that same route that we took. The Catholic priest there waiting for us uh, at the other end for the service, my, my in-laws come uh, from, uh, they are Catholic. They were actually calling my sister and finding out how we were throughout the journey because they knew what happened the day before. But we got there safely. The burial took place. We came back, all of us safely. In fact, at home, we thought they were going to give us trouble. In fact, it was so peaceful, we were just wondering what happened. I just want to thank God because truly God went ahead of us. He went in front of us. We, we went from Benin in a convoy. It, the convoy was visible. But God covered us. We saw cattle. We saw cattle grazing. And my sister said, it means that they are camped. Fulani headsmen, they are somewhere inside. They did not see us. So I just want to bless the name of the Lord for that cover. We went and came back safely. A few days after we got back, a video was going around about how the headsmen had waylaid people traveling from Benin, somewhere in Okada town. You know, that's the same route we took. For six hours, they had waylaid all the cars. People could not go anywhere. We took that same route, and they did not see us. I just want to bless the name of the Lord. For his mercies, for his journey mercies over us, and for the prayer cover. Indeed, God hears and answers prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's just stand. Those are wonderful testimonies. Uh, Brother Bandi's testimony is so awesome. It is mind-boggling. Let's just begin to thank God. It is only God that can do such things. It is only God that can watch over you. He said it. His word does not fail. He gives his angels charge over you. Only God can do awesome tests, uh, can do awesome things in our lives. So, in fact, that testimony is supernatural. Let us just thank God because God showed up in Bandi's life. Father, we just want to thank you because indeed you are such a good God. You always put songs of praises in our mouths. Father, we are grateful. Who else do we have in heaven but you? Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the wonderful testimony of your son. Thank you, Lord, because even in his life, testimonies will continue to abound in the name of Jesus. As he continues to walk with you, testimonies will continue to abound for him in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you for joining mercies over me and my family. 
we say thank you, Lord. We can't stop thanking you because indeed your hand was upon us. You kept us away from evil and from disaster. Father, I say thank you. On behalf of my family, I want to say thank you. I return all the glory to you. I return all the honor to you. No man will share the glory with you. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name, almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. And so in this house, in this ministry, testimonies will continue to abound in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name. Because you have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. My year of more of him. Amen. It's offering time. Offering time. Let's be excited. I say offering time. Amen. Genesis 26 verse 12. He says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Let us pray. I want you to lift up your offerings. Father, we bless you for placing this token in our hands and for giving us a heart to release it to your work here. In accordance with your word, as we sow this token in this soil, PGPM, we command a hundredfold harvest in the name of Jesus. Lord, accept us and accept our offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we please rise and as we give our offering? Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can do. Yeah, what no man can do, Jehovah, only you, only you. Only you, only you, Jehovah, only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah? Only you, only you. Only you, only you, Jehovah. Only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah? Only you can do. Oh, what no man can do, Jehovah? Only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my year of more of him. Amen and amen. Prayer answering God, you are worthy of praise. You deserve our praise. Prayer answering God, you are worthy of praise. You deserve my praise. Prayer answering God, you are worthy of praise. You deserve our praise. to appreciate the Lord for bringing you personally into these three days fasting and prayer, the third day that he brought you into it, begin to appreciate him, begin to thank him for the grace that sustained you through. I want you to appreciate him for the prayer he has answered and you are going to see the results. We have had a testimony of God, great power here, of what God did, the surprising act of God, the protective acts of God. I want you to celebrate him. I want you to thank the keeper of Israel. I want you to go ahead and give him worship. Thank him for his mercy that are new every morning in your life. Appreciate him, bless him. I want you to begin to thank the Lord for all the covenants we have entered. I want you to appreciate him for all the communion service we have done this year. Oh, thank him, thank him for establishing Oh, for establishing the blessings of the covenant in the past years in our life. Say, Father, we thank you. 
You have had testimony here of how the covenant have answered in many lives. I want you to begin to appreciate the Lord. Thank Him for bringing you on the platform of another covenant. Thank Him, thank Him. Because the covenant has not failed over your life. That is why you are standing today. Say, Father, I thank you for the covenant that you gave me privilege to enter into that have not failed. That is making me to stand today. Give him thanks for the workings of the covenant over your family last year and the workings that you will receive this year. Thank him for the covenant of mercy and compassion that is already working in your life. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 5 verse 12. I'm reading from English Standard Version. He said, for you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, as I end this fasting today, and I reactivate and enter into the covenant of life, let me find favor with you that the covenant will not fail in my life. Let me find favor with you. Talk to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I have come ending this fasting today to reactivate and to enter into the covenant of life with you today, let me find favor with you that this covenant will not fail in my life. It is the last one for the year. It will not fail in my life. It will not fail in my life. It will not fail in my life. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 84, verse 11. Psalm 84, verse 11. The Bible says, For the Lord God is our son and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good things from those who do what is right. The Lord will not withhold any good thing from you in the name of yeah. Jesus. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as I'm ending this fasting today, oh, everything that pertains to life that I desire and have requested this year, Lord, let it be given to me in your mercy. As I end this fasting today, everything that pertains to life that I desire, that I have made request of within these three days. Father, in your mercy, let it be released to me. Let it be given to me. Everything that pertains to life, let it be given to me. Let it be released to me. In the name of Jesus, everything that pertains to life, comfort of life, peace of mind, let it be given to me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Psalm 108, verse 13, Psalm 108, verse 13, he said, through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that, that shall tread down our enemies. Whether we like it or not, there are battles we can avoid. Hence, we wake up every day, there are battles that will come our way that we can't avoid. Even as you have journeyed through life now, there are battles that you just find yourself fighting it, and you can't avoid it. It's just there. And God permits that you should fight it. You should go through it. So you are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, for Jesus. any battle for any that battle may confront me this year, 2020, 2020 and beyond, beyond, let me not be a loser. Help me to gain victory over it and make let me an overcomer. In paraventure, Lord, there is any battle you know about that I will have to go through this year. I said today, oh Lord, Father, let me not be a loser. In the name of Jesus, help me to be an overcomer and gain victory. As you help Goliath, he became an overcomer and gave victory by your hands. Father, you are the only one that can help me. In paraventure, in any month of the year that is still remaining, there is battle I have to fight in the dream of the night. There is battle I have to fight in any shape or form. Father, give me victory. Anywhere that the battle will confront me, give me victory. Victory. Give me victory. I will not be shut down. I will not be silenced in the battle of life. I will be an overcomer within and without. I will be an overcomer within and without. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are entering the covenant of life. Psalm 118 verse 17. NIV say, I will not die but live. I will proclaim what the Lord has done. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I will not die this, year. Not die this year. No member of my family no will be snatched this family. year. No matter what is happening around me, because your word declare it, I believe your word. This year, 2020, will not snatch my life. No member of my family will be snatched this year. 
In your mercy, O Lord. In your mercy, O Lord. This year, 2020, no matter how it is, O Lord, it will not come near me. In the name of Jesus, it will not come near me. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. I want you to make a decree earnestly. I want you to make a decree. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I make a decree that in this year 2020, death will not will be far from me. I will not die. No member of my family will die. You will preserve us in PGP and family. Make a decree, Father. I decree that in this year 2020, no matter what is happening around me. I will not die in the name of Jesus. I decree today that in the name of Jesus, no member of my family will be snatched in the mighty name of Jesus. In this PGP and family, you will preserve us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You hear the testimony of our sister. When she was sharing that testimony with me before now, she said, we are going, Pastor Shola. We see the cattle shows that there are areas there that there are camps. I don't know if you understand. The camps of people, and they had that a day before they go on that road. They had already kidnapped somebody, killed somebody on that same road. And every time you hear this, you hear that. But the Lord, who is our God, that is why we are making the decree. And I want to tell you that death has ears and he can hear. So I want you to declare to the spirit of death oh, that you are not his candidate this year. In the name None of, of your children is the candidate in this the year. In the name of Jesus, no, I, I declare and decree, I'm decree. not a candidate I'm to the spirit of death to my catch up with me this year. I decree no death. member of my family will be Jesus. candidate of death no this year. My, my husband will, will not be candidate of death this death year. In the name of Jesus, I decree today everything that concerns me, nothing will die in my hands. Whatever I cross into 2020 with that is living will not be taken away from me. In the name of Jesus will not be taken away from me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you hold somebody where you are and make a decree with such a person? The Bible says two of you shall decree a thing. You are going to decree. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We decree today even if they are distributing debt free of charge it will never get to your home. It will not enter PGPM. If they are distributing it free of charge it will not get to your home. It will not enter PGPM. It will not get to your home. It will not get to the home of every member of your family. Your siblings. It will not get to their home. Even if it is free, it will not get to you. It will not get to your tongue. You will not queue up to receive it. In the name of Jesus, you will not queue up to receive it. It will not get to you. It will not get to your family. In the name of Jesus, you will not queue up to receive it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to put your hands on your head and say, Father, Father, today in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, secure I secure myself by the covenant of life. Covenant of by life. the covenant of covenant life, life, my blood will not be for sacrifice oh, to sort out Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Father, I come today and I say, Father, the covenant of life will secure me. My blood will not be used as a sacrifice or oh, not to secure the freedom of this land. Father, keep me, protect me. Whenever you are passing through the nation, let this covenant speak for me. In the name of Jesus, let it speak for me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to stretch your hands towards the altar. Father, I come under the authority of Elohim concerning everyone that is standing here today. And I speak over your life and every member of your family that you represented. That in this year, 2020, none of you will be candidate of death in the name of Jesus. Amen. I use you as a point of contact to every member of your family. As the wind is passing by, the happening that will intercept your joy this year is there by seas in the name of Amen. Jesus. I speak into your life that the feet of mourners will not locate your home. I decree today you are rescued from the forces of death. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are rescued from the power of grave. Amen. In the name of Jesus, yeah. you are rescued from the spirit of death Amen. that will come in any shape or form in the, in name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Death will be far from your home. Oh, it will be far from your family. Yeah. Death will be far from all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus, yeah. You will not tread on the path of destruction. Wherever you find yourself, if destruction is in the front, you will be behind in the name of Jesus. 
I speak into your life today that the Lord will spear you. Amen. He will spear every member of your family. In the plague that is hovering over Nigeria, just as God preserved the people in the land of Goshen, your family, yourself, and everything connected and associated is qualified for that preservation in the name of Jesus. He's qualified for that preservation in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you for your steadfast love over us, O Lord. We are here today and we say because we know that your mercy never ceases; they are renewed every morning. And great is your faithfulness. We say, Father, in your mercy and your grace, we stand to acknowledge that your covenant will work for us in the name of Jesus. Let it please you again to activate this covenant and bring men into the covenant today. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your hands together as you take your seat. Hallelujah. I welcome you all to the covenant of life service in Jesus' name. Quick housekeeping announcement. Amen? Amen. Quick housekeeping announcement. Now, I want to announce to us our own uh, sister, Taiwo Shibodu. Mrs. Taiwo Shibodu. First grandchild came on Friday. I was to announce it last Monday, but I forgot. That's our baby. Hallelujah. You remember her testimony of the baby that they say, oh, there is five brought. Look at the fine baby that the five brought brought. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. I thought you are going to jam your hands together for the Lord. And you can put her number on the screen. Anybody that wants to reach her, you can reach her through WhatsApp. God had blessed her with her first grandchild. And the Lord will keep that child. We cover that child with the blood of Jesus. We pronounce the blessing of God upon that child. Preparing to name this baby. She's a baby girl. The name that will be given to her, we answer for her. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Announcement concerning the food bank that we are going to be having to do on Monday. I just want to plead with us for every one of us because the Lord is giving us an assignment and we have been doing it. Yes, things are expensive, the way things have been, but the easiest way for you to do is for you to calculate, when we are doing three days like this, calculate the amount of your breakfast and your lunch for the three days and donate it for somebody that don't have food. I don't know if you understand. It's not that you don't have the food. But you know what the plate of food you will have eaten will cost. Calculate it. And just put it together and hand that food over to somebody. And you never go hungry in Jesus' name. As you do it, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Tonight, we want to come into the covenant of what? And I tell you, it's a month of wisdom. And for that reason, it's a month of wisdom and the wisdom of the Lord will answer for us in Jesus' name. So we want to talk briefly on this topic, wisdom keys for preservation. Wisdom keys for preservation. Amen? Our anchor scripture is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21. It says, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of knowledge. The lips of the righteous Feed many, but fools die for lack of knowledge. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Wisdom keys for preservation. And the objective is for us to know the key that stands that God has put in place to preserve us. The scripture makes it abundantly clear that the way of wisdom is the way of life. What we want to do tonight is also a way of wisdom. To be wise is to live. And to be wise is to be alive without injury. Not half-half. Amen? Proverbs 13, 14 says, The law of the wise is fountain of life. To turn one away from the snare of death. The law of the wise is fountain of life. To turn one away from the snare of death. The Lord will give us understanding. The way of foolishness is the way of death. That is the truth. And that's why Proverbs 9, uh, 6 says, Forsake foolishness and live. <laughs> and go in the way of understanding. Forsake foolishness and live. For everyone that is here tonight, it is because you are wise. Amen? It is because you are what? So do not be, you need to know that you are wise. That is why you are here. Now, wisdom key, what are the wisdom key that guarantees preservation of life? 
What are the wisdom key that guarantees preservation of life? Number one, maintain your place in God's presence. Maintain your place in God's presence. Because when you come before the Lord in his presence, when you are leaving him, he does not leave you. He comes along with you. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of God Mosai shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. So when you dwell in his secret place, you move around with the shadow of God Almighty. So we need to maintain our place in God's presence. And that's why Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So when you maintain your place in his presence, he's always with you. I want us to know from this scripture that safety outside of God's presence is never guaranteed. Safety outside of God's presence is never guaranteed. Some people believe in a lot of things that keep them going. A man was giving his testimony one time, how he was giving a white stone to keep the white stone in his pocket. That anywhere he's going, he must go with the white stone. So the day he forget the white stone, he should know that death has come. So one day he was going from his house and he forgot the white stone at home. And as he forgot the white stone, he got to this third main land bridge. He remember, he said, ah, he thought he's going to die that day. So he got to the office. He wanted to tell his boss that, oh, I need to quickly go back home. I forgot something. Then the boss said, no, 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 you can't go. You have a lot to do. So he waited. He was panicking. He did the work. Or he couldn't finish till the end of the day. And he went back home. Nothing happened to him. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Nothing happened to him. He said, ah. He woke up the following morning. He said, but this thing is not working. He decided to try the second day. He left it again. Came to office. Nothing happened to him. On the third day, he said, this thing is not working, Joe. And do you know what happened? He left it. On the third day. That was how he threw it away. For some of us now, they will tell you, type in. So that when witches see you, they won't do you anything. All is a lie. For some, you want to sleep. Rather than reading Bible, you put Bible on your, on your head. And you, and you will have bad dream with the Bible. You know some people, when they give out to new baby, instead of reading the word on the baby, they will put baby and the Bible, and the baby will be crying in the night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And do you know I used to tell Christians, who wake up in the morning? Psalm 23, Psalm 91, Psalm this, Psalm this. You are not different from the person that they have given something to leak in the morning. That is not prayer. You wake up in the morning, you are going, after reading that Psalm, you carry an anointing oil, put on your head. The person they gave something leaked three times in the morning before you go out. You are not, you are, there is no difference. Or you want to sleep in the night, ah, Psalm 35, so that I won't have bad dreams. You read all those Psalms, Psalm 41, you read everything, Psalm 40, you read all. You didn't pray, you just read the psalm. In Jesus' name, you did the mark of the cross, sleep. And yet you have bad dream. Because you are not actually dwelling in the presence of God. You are only doing spiritual rituals. Amen? Spiritual what? There are people that put cross on that pillow. And they have had dream that they pursue them in the dream. With the cross. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> The Lord will give us understanding. So what am I saying? Safety outside God's presence is never guaranteed. And the second thing is danger and divine presence are mutual, mutually exclusive. The danger is normal. And divine presence is with you. Every day we move around, there is danger. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And number two, maintain the shield of the word. Maintain the what? The shield of the word. Psalm 91 verse 4. Please put it on the screen. Psalm 91 verse 4. Psalm 91 verse 4. Quickly please. It says, He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wing you shall take refuge. His truth, which is the word, shall be your shield and buckler. His truth. The word is the truth. Which is the word, shall be your shield and buckler. John chapter 1 verse 5. John chapter 1 verse 5. So which means, you must ensure that there is a revelation you are holding on to. From the word of God, that is your shield. He said, and the light shine in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. And darkness did not comprehend it. So you must have a revelation of the word that you are holding on to. For your what? For your shield. Because he that keepeth his never sleep nor slumber. 
And not that, that what do you have? The word of God sheds life directly. And the word of God also build faith, which is a shield of life. The word of God can shield your life directly. When the word is inside of you, you are not caught unaware. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the word of God is light that dissipates the forces and the agenda of darkness. I remember one time, I think I've given this testimony before. I was having a, a, a nine days vigil. And in the house where I was, I would be hearing chocolo, chocolo, chocolo in the night. Ah! And I would be binding, binding, binding. Second day, third day, fourth day. After a while, something told me, the prayer you are praying, you forgot it. You are just binding, binding. Then the fifth day, I decided not to even pay attention to that thing that will come and be making noise. You will hear the noise. And it's as if there's a pass of darkness on that street. So I was hearing the noise. I didn't bother myself. And I just began. And I continued the prayer. After a while, I had, that means I have left that person. And immediately I had that. And I said, deaf here can never hear from God. And henceforth, because you have done this, you remain dead, dead forever. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So you need to have revelation that you will stand on. And I remember in our house here, looking from the week, I don't know why I was praying in the night. And I was looking from there and I saw chicken, plenty chicken. I told us in this park view, plenty tiny, tiny chicken moving on the street. And as I look at it, I said, darkness and light can never be together. What happened? The person went, went, and went to all those areas. Plenty chickens on the road. And by the time it was morning, we come out and I was going. The man that I didn't know from nowhere, just look at me, look at me. And it's the way he even responded. And I said, oh, so he's the one that came with. So every time I see him, I will say in my heart, Baba Ladiye, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> in this estate. Amen. You know, you see beautiful, beautiful buildings. You don't know what is going on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number, number what are we? Number three. Give no room to fear. You know, for some of us, what want to kill yourself have not come. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Please put it on the screen. What, what? Do you understand what I'm saying? I've not come. You are running. You know, that is the system in Lagos. If you have been to Idumata before, <laughs> you just see people running. They don't know why they are running. And when you ask them, they don't know. All you are doing is what? Following them to run. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, for the thing I greatly feared had come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. Most of the time, we exhibit fear. And we think we are exhibiting faith. When things happen around our life, the way you begin to fidget and you are praying, there is fear, not faith. Faith comes with boldness. And one of the things that can preserve us is for us to not to fear. Fear attracts the enemy and his activities. And somebody asks me, but when fear comes and I can't, I can't control it, it's because there is a danger around you and the Holy Ghost is sensitizing you to pray. It's not for you to not accommodate the fear and live in the fear. Fear is the foundation for torment. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 says fear is a torment. So to be afraid today is to be tormented tomorrow. Do you see it? There is no fear in love, but, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fear has not been made perfect in love. We don't need to be afraid. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The reason why a lot of things are happening to many today is because of fear. Number four, guard your words. Guard your words. Proverbs 18, 21 told us that the power of life and death is what? Because most of the things you see around your life are satanic suggestion. You can imagine you driving your car and something will be telling you, what if this car enter under this trailer? You are the one driving it. For you to know how bad the heart of man is. Or you can imagine you are climbing the step. What if I fall and I roll? Nobody knows what is going on in your heart. You are cooking on the fire. Ah, what if this thing just catch fire now? And you see, I have a witness. Is it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What if this fire now just blow into my eyes. You are batting in the bathroom. Ah, what if I just fall inside this bath now? The type of thought that is coming. And some people will say it out because of frustration or maybe you are, you are, you are frustrated or you are, you are depressed. He just wants you to see it. The devil brings those things to see your reaction because they are just suggestions. He just wants to see your reaction. I hear what you will say. When you accept it, then it is accepted. When you reject it, then it is rejected. 
Some people will be telling you, I think I want, I think, I think something is happening to me as if, as if I would die. And the person is already saying it. Instead of, I will not die but live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? So I just want us to know that words transmit life or death, depending on what is being said. And words empower the right word or wrong word, depending on what is being spoken. So be careful what you say with your mouth, no matter what you are passing through. Because it's one of the key for preservation. Number what are we? Number five. Never exist above godly counsel or admonition. Proverbs eleven fourteen. Never exist above godly counsel or admonition. Because sometimes you can be counseled, you, you can be given admonition. Like if we enter the month of health, we used to say about a lot of things that we eat that are not good for our body. Don't avoid the counsel. Where there is no counsel, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is what? There is safety. Counsel about our life, about the way we live. So the way of abnormation is the way of preservation. And I want us to know that the avoidance of counsel is the acceptance of crisis. Counsel is important, especially from people who love you and have your interest in heart. So when they tell you, don't take it as an offense. It is because they love you and they have your interest in life. Because when they are telling you, it might look as if, why are they brushing me like this? Why are they telling me this? I have my life to live. It is out of love. So when you are being cancelled, you need to know that it is out of love. Somebody cancelled me on Sunday. She, she saw my eyes. She said, Pastor Shola, you are very tired. You need to rest. And I was laughing. The person really knew that I was tired. But I didn't tell anybody. But when I got home, I said, I need to rest. But I couldn't rest because I had to go somewhere. The Lord will give you understanding in Jesus' name. So when people tell you a thing, I didn't think that, why is she telling me? I don't know if you understand. Yes, I'm her pastor, but she's telling me something that I need to know. But her telling me, put me to know, ah, I really need to rest. I really need to rest. And it was ringing in my heart. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And number six, which is the last one, enter or activate the covenant of life. Enter or activate the covenant of life. And I want you to hear me clearly. The Lord will give you understanding. Enter or activate the covenant of life. Amen? Amen. And surely God will move you into that covenant in Jesus' name. I want us to know that the covenant of life that we do enter in this commission is because God has given us the discovery that the best way to live is to live by covenant. God himself said in Psalm 84 verse 34, he said, my covenant will I not break. That is to let us know that God will not break his covenant, but it is possible for him to change his mind concerning his promises. Why? We have seen people that have defaulted in the area and God reversed. God decided to make a whole family, the family of Eli. His plan was that they would be priests. But when they went against his law, what did he do? He took it away from them. And what did he do to Saul? He took away his kingdom when he decided to disobey God. So when we come to court covenant like this, we come with a token. If you have not been here, that's why I'm saying this. We come with a token. There is no covenant that is ever established without a sacrifice. So our sacrifice is that we, it's what we call token. And tonight we'll lay it at the altar as we call this covenant. So when you see us in the course of the service, asking people to come with the token of the covenant, it is a sacrifice to seal the covenant. Amen? So whatever the spirit of the Lord is laying in your heart, give it to the Lord and we give it to our fathers in faith. I think in this month of March, I will see them. Amen? In Psalm 50 verse 5, Scripture to confirm this. And I'm reading from NIV. Say, gather to me these consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Covenant of life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. He said, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Amen. And breathed, and breathed into his nose the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Let's look at it from Good News by Good News Translation. It said, then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life, giving, he breathed life giving breath into his nose ring, And the man began to live. What of the Message Bible? Message Bible says, God formed man out of death from the ground and blew into his nose ring, the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. Amen? So let me say this. 
life is meant to be lived from this scripture. Anything God gives life to, it is for that thing to live by it. So if God has given you life, you are to live by that life. Anything that is a living thing, live by the life that is given to it. But when it comes to living, there are two possibilities. It is possible to live life well. And it is possible to live life badly. And it is possible for life to be cut short. Do you understand that? So it is possible for you to live a good life. It is also possible for you to be living a life that is not good, that is, is bad. And it is possible to live a life that is cut short. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So in other words, it is possible to have a good life. It is possible to have a bad life. It is possible to end this life untimely. No one here will end their life untimely in the name of Jesus. So that somebody is alive does not mean that the person is living well. That is why this covenant is very important. Somebody is alive does not mean that the person is doing what? Is living well. But by this covenant, I tell you, the Lord will establish it with every one of us and everything around our life. We begin to bring forth the Zoe of God in the name of Jesus. So from the passage we read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we will see that anything that exists without the breath of God is dead. Amen? It was the breath that blown into the nose of man that made man to begin to live. The Bible says, after the breath was released into the nose of the man, the man came alive as a what? A living soul. So before the breath came, can you imagine the appearance of man on the floor after the molding of man? It's one of the scriptures we read says soil. You can imagine that man until the breath of God entered into the nursery. That life was meaningless. It means to us that nothing received the breath of God that stays the way it is. Anything around you that receives the breath of God comes alive. And this has to do with everything your hand touch. When you come into the covenant of life, you are receiving life not just for you to live alone, but your business come alive. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Whatever has been stale, come back to life. Because you receive the breath of God into it. Because as you receive it, it carries your identity. And as it carries your identity, you also receive it to begin to show life. So as you enter into this covenant of life, Jehovah God, today I tell you, fresh breath will come upon your, you in the name of Jesus. And that fresh breath will give you new, new lease of life in Jesus' name. I want us to know that death is very powerful. Death can affect anything, not just human being. Have you ever heard this statement? The car engine is dead. Have you ever heard it? Is the car engine alive? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Does he have life? But people will say the car engine is dead. Have you ever heard also my wristwatch is dead? I'm just letting you know how powerful <laughs> death, <laughs> death is. They are not living yet. Death has power over it. Your business is not living yet. Death has power over it. Your career is not living. But I'm telling you, death has power over it. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So not just the living thing. They are not living yet. Death has power over it. So anything existing come under the power of death. Anything at all. Death has no respect for anybody or anything. The only thing that death can dare, cannot dare is the line covenant of life. It, does, it doesn't dare it. Which is the line of the breath of God. Amen. But anything outside that, death has no respect for it. Including the anointing. Death does not respect the anointing. That is why great men of God like Elijah eventually died. Amen? They eventually did what? They died. But the Bible says in good old age. Also, it doesn't have respect for wealth. Death does not have respect for wealth. For as wealthy as Abraham was, yet he still died. In good old age. So it is possible that he has no respect for man. But when you have the covenant of life with you, it cannot cut you short before your time. And the Lord will answer this for you in the name of Jesus. So it was through the breath of God that ordinary soil, the Bible calls it soil, became a living thing. And I want you to know that the breath of life add value to life. Add value to what? To everything around you. Why the man laid down just as a soil, there was nothing on it. But when breath came upon it, it add value to it. When you look into the body of a dead man, the man waste away. So anything that is not having life, I want to tell you, it's valueless. 
And that is why when you see somebody that is just lying down and they just put in the net, you say he's dead, he looks like a wasted garbage. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when anything increases in value, the world also increases. The word of whatever increases in your life will increase. As the breath of God come upon you today, your word will be increased in the name of Jesus. Your word for living will be increased in the name of Jesus. Now, why do we cut or activate the covenant of life? Why? Life can only be gotten in him. You say in him is life. Life can only be gotten in him. When you come into covenant with God, you are coming into agreement with God that you are coming to bond with him to exercise that authority that will mark you for separation. So life can be gotten in him. And that is why we cut the covenant with him. If you want to enter into business or partnership with anybody, you will be sure that that person has what you need. Is that not so? You want to come into partnership, you have a land, and you want to build a house. You want somebody that have money to come and build. When they build, they build two houses, give you half and you have half. You will be sure that he has the money before you come into partnership. So we come to God to cut the covenant with him, to go into partnership with him concerning life, because we know he's the only one who has gotten life. Amen? Why do we cut or activate covenant? Number two, you are enjoying divine substitution. You enjoy what? You enjoy divine substitution. A lot of times, many will have been killed by the powers of darkness, but for divine substitution. For divine substitution. I have seen people that gave testimony, and I will give my personal testimony of that they are standing like this. And something say move. And by the time the person moved, the car came and cleared about five people. Including, and the person was in the middle of the people, it cleared. There was substitution. And why will God do that? I want us to know. In Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43 verse 4, he says, since you have been precious and honored in my sight, he said, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give people in your place a nation instead of your life. He will give people in your place a nation instead of your life. What does that mean? When you come into this covenant, the law of substitution begins to work for you. That you will have a dream and the law will be substituting the wicked for your sake. There was a house we used to live in Ajao Estate. And the landlady of that house, she's a powerful woman. Powerful, so powerful. And I have a girl that was living with me. So whenever I'm praying, she was the one one time who came and just in the house, put these tiny, tiny flies that does not have feather, came into different batches. And I said, what do we do to this? The Lord said, this is not, Gosh this is not Egypt, this is Goshen. That is the scripture. And he said, take water and pour the water. After pouring the water, the flies went like this, back into our house. That was the beginning of the problem. And when she saw uh, the, 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 my daughter staying with me then, one of the girls living with me, and the woman told her husband and they were beating this girl. So by the time I came, my neighbor said, please, don't beat that girl. She doesn't have any, I didn't even know what happened. And the next thing, the mama, uh, the baba came down and started that, hey, um, I have come. I have to decide whether this girl will be living with us or she's going to park or we are going to park. Either the girl will be living with us or we'll move out of the house. And I look at the baba. I say, baba, I didn't rent house from you. It's my husband that rent house. When he come, you people will talk it out together. I say, hey, you, you are always like this. I know. And he started saying a lot of things. And I look at the man. I say, baba, do you know that if fire, if dry, dry grass near fire, the fire will burn dry grass. He said, hey, am I the one you are chanting to? He now says something, says something, says something. I said, Baba, any bird that mistakenly fly in a wrong way will hit the rock. And he did like this. I kept quiet. Then the woman came. As she's coming, she entered the house. She saw me. And she started calling me with my first daughter's name. Mameniola, Mameniola. And I saw this old woman. She's coming. Hey, I shouldn't be angry to Baba. And she wants to go on her knee. I said, hey, what? I just went on my knee before her. So when I went on my knee, and I said, Mama, I kunle abi amo kono ni kingba. Mude ti gba ni joti ya mi bimi. La ti join ya wani gogba ni zoba ti jumi lo ki ma kunle fungo. I don't, only the Yoruba person can understand what I'm saying. That the kneeling down of an elderly woman, <laughs> that the kneeling down of an elderly woman, 
I'm only ordained to receive it the day my mother gave birth to me. That after that, any elderly woman I see, I'm the one that is to kneel down for them. She just look at me, why? <laughs> she look at me, but that word is not from me. Oh. It's from the Holy Ghost. If you can understand what I'm saying. That the kneeling down of an elderly woman that I'm supposed to receive is only the one that I received the day I was giving birth to, when my mother was giving birth to me. After that, I am told that anyone that is older than me, I'm the one that should kneel down for them. Then she stood. It was as if the battle is just like that. By the time she began this thing, when my husband came, the Baba came and he was talking. My husband said, Baba, uh, don't be angry. I said, no, 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 no. We must move out of the house. I said, please leave him. We started the battle in the night. What happened? We were in our room. My husband was moved from room one to room two. And I woke up in the night. I was looking for him. Where are you? Where are you? The girl in the room has run out. When she saw that you on the bed, she, don't know. she didn't know who brought that into the room. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Have you ever heard of people that will sit in their room and they will meet themselves on the road? You've never heard of it. You've never heard of it. People sleep in their room and wake up outside on the road. So, <laughs> so when, <laughs> when the girl ran out, my husband didn't get up from the bed. He was praying. I said, what is he doing in the maid's room? I kept quiet. Then we began to pray. So he came out. So in the night, when he came out, he told me, he said, I don't know how I got there. <laughs> I said, hey, <laughs> what happened? He said, he just woke up and find himself in the other room. So they have lifted him with witchcraft power <laughs> and put him <laughs> in the other room. And I said, okay, we need to pray. So we started praying, we started praying. And as his prayer, I said, this thing that they move you, they want to fight us with the spirit of death. And we began to do this prayer. By the time we continued the prayer, something happened. That woman now came in the night with something like mortar. You know mortar? She just appeared. I was sleeping. And she came, she pursued me, pursued me. Immediately I recognized it. I don't know how it turned. And I now, re I mean, took that, um, <laughs> took what she was pursuing me with, the mortar. And I hit her head. So by the time I hit the head, I was just like that. The following morning, she didn't come out. Before I knew it, they say she was sick. Before I knew it, she had brain tumor. She now said that they should call me to come and pray with her. I didn't even bother. I wanted to go and pray. But as I got there, the Lord said, don't. And my husband was standing. And he too was having the witness that I should not. So he was trying to touch me. I didn't touch. So when the son said we should pray, I said, he should pray. He just sing. <laughs> and he said, after singing, we left the place. Before we know it, the mama was in the hospital. She was taken to UCH. Then something happened in the house. The day she's going to die, fire came into the house without anybody putting fire into the, I mean, the, the drum of water. And I told my husband, she visited the house. I said, you will hear that she's there. Before we know it in the evening, she died. And the Lord said, move your children out of the house. We moved. But that was what was planned. Do you understand what I mean by substitution? When the covenant of life is speaking in your life, they will fire you out to go back to the person. The Lord will give us understanding. The Lord will give us understanding. And lastly, why do we call the covenant? You receive a mark of touch not. A mark of touch not. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. A mark of touch not. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the forehead of men who sigh and cry over all the abomination that are done within. He said to the other, he said, in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes peer. Even if the Lord is sending people to destroy a nation, when you bear that mark, the seal of covenant of life, it will jump over you. And Galatians chapter 6 verse 17 says, henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the mark of the Lord Jesus. Do you know what I want you to remember as you call this covenant? It's about Abel. Abel in Genesis chapter 4 verse 15. Abel killed and God passes judgment on him. What was the judgment? He put a mark on him that he should not be killed by anyone. I don't know if you understand. Somebody that killed, how much more you that have not killed? If a man under the weight of punishment can be preserved by death, from death by God, how much more you under the weight of grace and covenant of life? Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Before we take this covenant, before we, take, we go into the covenant, I want you to lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, breathe on me, O God. Call forth the breath of God and say, Father, breathe on me. 
the breath of God, the breath of God. The breath of God, the breath of God. Say, Father, breathe on me so that everything around your life will receive the zoe of God. Breathe on all that pertain me. I stand to represent my family today to enter this covenant of life. Breathe on me, O oh Lord. 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 Oh Lord. I stand to receive the covenant of life. Breathe on me, breathe on me. Breathe on me, breathe on me. Breathe on everything that pertains my life. That pertains my life. On your call over my life, Father, breathe on it. On the grace you have given me, Father, breathe on it. On my husband, my children, Father, breathe on me. Both spiritual and physical children, Father, breathe. Breathe. Let everything, oh God, Father, that will be coming forth out of me. Lord, show forth your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the spirit of the Lord come down. Let the spirit of the Lord come down. Let the spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the spirit of the Lord going to sing that song one more time. We are going to call the covenant. Brethren, I want us to know that the custodian of the breath of God is the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. to lift it up. I want you to lift it up just as I'm standing. Just bring out your token of covenant and if you have come with your prayer request also you can just hold it on the other and just bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring out. Bring out, bring out your token immediately. Oh, I want you to bring it out and lift it up above your head. Just lift it up above your head. Just lift it up above your head. Just lift it up above your head. Father, because we are precious to you, we have come to you today. Because we want to enter into this covenant with you. Oh Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, you will come into this covenant with us. Have you lifted it above your head? Have you lifted it above your head? Say, Father, I thank you for opportunity to come into covenant of life with you. I present myself as an entity over my family. And I say, Lord, by this privilege, you will come into this covenant with me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you. Lift it up and close your eyes. Father, we thank you. For this is a real privilege you granted us, O God, Father. As one body and as family and as individual to come into covenant of life with you for year 2020. For many, it is to activate. And for many, it is to call the covenant. We thank you for all the past covenants which are still active in our lives. We return all the glory to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, just as you have instructed me, O God, Father, and under your authority, I bring everyone and every soul and every member of their family tonight and those that are here by proxy, I bring all before your throne of grace. And I ask, O Lord, let it please you to bring us into the covenant of life in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to bring us into the covenant of life in the name of Jesus. And in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, let everything that pertain our life and everybody's life here, O oh God, Father, come into the realm of the covenant of life in the name of Jesus. Whatever is dying in your life, come back to life. Whatever is dying in your life, come back to life. I ask that as you drop this token at your feet on this altar, let the power to fulfill this covenant rest upon us in the name of Jesus. And Father, we will stand to testify that you are good. 
you have given us testimony enough to show that this covenant work in our life. Father, our dear sister that will have been used for ritual, you brought her to life. What a faithful God you are. The son of one of us that will have been in a plane crash, Father, you hindered it. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Choir sing this one. Can we please bring our token to the altar, present it to the Lord, just quickly, just quickly. And we just partake of the communion. Pastor Alex. Let the power of the Lord come. to partake of this communion table. He said, I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Amen? That is to let us know that the life of Jesus contains high dose, high dose of the Zoe of God. And as we partake of this communion table today, the life of Christ, the preservative life in him, we come into us in the name of Jesus. Yes, the communion is the body and the blood of Jesus. That is, that is that will be communicated to us through this table. And surely, we take it is the indominate, indomitable and undefeatable uh, uh, power that is in it that will begin to work in us in the name of Jesus. And as that life come into us today, whatever has been dead in us, we come alive in the name of Jesus. We have entered the covenant. We seal it up with this communion. I speak to this table today that the Zoe of God penetrates into it in the name of Jesus. Out of this blood, you will take into you the life of Christ indeed in the name of Jesus. And out of this bread, you take into you the strength of Christ in the name of Jesus. We consecrate this table to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
communion and we close the service. Hallelujah. You will not take this in vain in Jesus' name. He said, for I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let's drink the wine. In one minute, just talk to the Lord. Just talk to him about what you have just gotten from him. Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. I speak into your life today that by this communion, I declare there is a communion of escape for you in the name of Jesus. The place of the blood of Jesus in the life of man, we always grant you root of escape in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord knows how to keep his own, no matter the danger in the world, you bear the mark upon your head. No evil come near you in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life that as you partake of this communion today, the seal of preservation is on you in the name of Jesus. For cutting this covenant, when the angel of destruction is passing by wherever you are, because he respected the mark of the blood in Egypt, he will respect the mark of this covenant on you in the name of Jesus. I pray that every member of your household, anything that causes destruction, God will spear you from them in the name of Jesus. I say God will spear you from them in the name of Jesus. I declare as you go, the Lord go with you. The presence of the Lord be with you. You will be declaring positive words in the name of Jesus. In your relationship with God, light will show in your life. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we share the grace? Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just said to me, he said, for somebody here, he said, the night is over. Yeah. I don't know the night you are going through. That night is over. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You are being brought into your city of enlargement. Yeah. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.